Welcome. Guess what time it is? It's time for Kids Church. We are really glad you've joined us today. So get ready. Because we're going to laugh and learn and worship. And pray and grow and connect. If you are in the area, we want to invite you to come and join us in person. We would love to see you. And hear your voices when you worship. And run around the playground playing tag with you. And give you a high five in the check-in tent. And hear your something good. And listen to all the ways you are learning about Jesus and how much he loves you. But until we see you in person, we are happy to get to connect here online. That's right. Welcome to Kids Church. What's up, guys? Hey, welcome back to another tic-tac-toe game. Today's edition is trivia edition. So here's what's going to happen. To actually throw our, our ball into the tic-tac-toe area, we're going to have to answer a trivia question. Whoever gets this question right, can throw the ball. Let's see who's going to win. You ready? Ready. Let's do it. Question one. What does STF stand for? Sun Protection Pro... Pro Sun protection. What? Well, Haley was close. It's sun protection factors. What's up, Haley? Close enough. All right. Oh, okay. Which U.S. state has the average hottest temperature? Texas. Arizona. Nevada. Average, what was the question? Average hottest temperature. California. Average hottest? Florida. Yes. No! Oh, man. Good try, Trey. All right. In which country was the record for hottest temperature ever recorded? Nevada. Kenya. What country? Country. Oh, sorry. I was in the States still. Uh, Africa. I mean, that's not. The United States. Yes.
I'm so excited that we're going to spend these next few moments worshiping together. If you like to sing and dance, say, oh yeah. That's right. You guys, it is so amazing that even though we're at home, we get to worship together. I just want to remind you guys that at any time as you're worshiping, you can give an offering to God. You can put it in a worship jar or offering box that you might have at your house, and you can send that to CA at any time. Well, you guys, I love worshiping with you. It's such a good reminder of how good God is to us, how much He loves us, how much He cares for us, how much He has provided for us, and that we can trust Him in all that we do. All right, everybody, stand on up and let's worship together. Jesus, 
What's up, everybody? It's always so good to see you all here. And if you're new, welcome. This is a place we, where we can all have fun together. Every week, we discover how amazing it is to know God and live his way. God can do big things through each and every one of us. We can put our confidence in him. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. Remember, you were made in God's image. He sees how special you are. He loves you more than you can even imagine. When you know that about yourself, it gives you the confidence to take on any challenge. God can see all those things about you, but our game today is more about what we can't see. It's the Disney Silhouette Challenge game. What will happen is you will see the silhouette of a Disney character for a couple of seconds, and then you will have to guess who you think that Disney character is. Each round will get tougher and tougher, but let's see if you can guess them all correctly, all right? I know you guys can do it. Let's go. Have fun. Great job, guys. Well, 
Today's Bible story is a doozy. It has heroes, villains, a fire pit, even a giant golden statue. All of this action takes place in the book of Daniel, chapter 3. During this time, the king of the land of Babylon was King Nebuchadnezzar, and he had a statue made that was 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. The king sent for every royal official in Babylon, all of the rulers and governors and advisors and treasurers and court officials. King Nebuchadnezzar basically asked for all of the leader leaders of the land to come check out this monstrosity of a statue. Among the leaders, though, were three Jewish men who had been brought to Babylon as captives, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let's find out more about this story in our video today. Let's take a look, y'all. Stories of the Bible, the fiery furnace. There once were three Jewish men named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hey! When they were very young, they were taken from Israel to live in a place called Babylon. At that time, the king of Babylon was a man named Nebuchadnezzar. That's it, almost there. And he made a gold statue that was 90 feet tall. Perfect. The king sent a message for everyone to come to the dedication of his statue. When everyone had assembled, <laughs> it was declared that people of all races, nations, and languages would bow before the statue and worship King Nebuchadnezzar's statue when they heard the sound of musical instruments. If anyone refused, they would be thrown into a fiery furnace. So at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people bowed to the ground and worshiped. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not because they were Jewish and would only bow to the one true God. Some of the wise men of Babylon went to the king and told him that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow to the statue. What? This made the king very angry, and he asked Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego if it was true that they would not bow to the statue. Then he said he would give them one more chance to bow down, and if they did not bow, they will be thrown into the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied that they didn't need to defend themselves against the king. They said, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. The king was so angry with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that he commanded the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be bound and thrown in the fire. The fire was so hot that it killed the soldiers that threw them in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell into the flames. But suddenly, the king jumped up and said to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw him in the furnace? The advisor said, yes. But the king said, look, I see four men walking around the fire and the fourth looks like a god. Then the king shouted to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire and everyone saw that the fire had not touched them. They didn't even smell of smoke. Then Nebuchadnezzar praised the one true God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had rescued them from the fire. And the king made a new command that anyone who spoke a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would be greatly punished. Then he promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in his court. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego trusted in God and were willing to die rather than worship any god but their own god. Pretty amazing story, right? I think the thing that stood out to me most was what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said as they refused to bow down to the statue. In Daniel 3.18, it says this, Even if we knew that our god wouldn't save us, we still wouldn't serve your gods. Guys, that's confidence. These three men knew the truth about God, and they believed in him so much that it didn't even matter what happened to them next. They knew that God 
was with them, even in the fiery furnace. When you trust God, you can live with confidence because you know that he's always with you. Trust that God is always with you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a lot of confidence, right? They stood for what they believed and they stood together. They weren't alone in the furnace because God was right there with them. God is with us too, always. In fact, after Jesus died and came back to life, one of the last things he said to his disciples was this, you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end, Matthew 28, 20. We can live with confidence when we choose to put our trust in God and remember all that he's done for us. He never leaves us. When times are good and when times are tough, he's always there to give us the strength we need. Again, remember this, y'all. Trust that God is always with you. When we have to face something scary, like a surgery, and when we need strength when things aren't going right with our friends or family, guys, God is right there. Many of you all know this about me, but my parents divorced when I was around the age of seven. That was definitely a scary time for me because I wasn't sure what life looked like ahead in that situation. Though as I reflect and look at that time, I realize God was with me during the entirety of it. I wasn't always looking for God in those moments then, but when I look back, I can see he was with me. I believe I experienced God's presence through the love and care my parents continue to show my sisters and I in that situation. I think I experienced his presence through the grace and patience of my teachers when I would, you know, sometimes forget an assignment at my dad's when I was with my mom, or just whenever I wasn't myself at school. I was, ab I was able to see that God was there through the care and love of others during that time in my life. Remember, you can trust God no matter what. You can depend on him through anything you have to face in life. Let's pray and thank him for that right now. Let's pray, y'all. God, you are so, so amazing. Please help us put our trust and confidence in you, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You were with them that day in the fire in such a powerful way. Even the king could see it. When we face tough times, give us the strength to trust you. Thank you for always, always being there for us. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you all so much, and I hope you guys enjoy this next time as a family as you all go through these questions, all right? Peace.